And Virginia Tech catches a break defensively. Mark, that is a huge turnover right there. Tyler Melton, the receiver, looked like he was open. Darian Porch with that ball hanging up in the air had enough time to rally and make that play. A big turnover for Virginia Tech defense. Right on cue, Mark, when we were talking about continuity and defense. No panic in that defense. They made a play, and Ryan Williams trying to make a play. Ryan Williams, no panic. No one to stop him. Touchdown, Hokies. Virginia Tech keeping it on the cool. 66 yards for the score. Mark, how quickly this football game changed. Excellent blocking up front. And the freshman tailback, that flu just went away. <laughs> yeah, when he flew by Georgia Tech. Under eight minutes to go in the third quarter, and Virginia Tech now to within four points. A career-long run for Ryan Williams, his tenth rushing touchdown of the season. And Baba, uh, here's a look at the definition of the continuity thing we were talking about when it comes to Virginia Tech. It's defined as uninterrupted duration or continuation, especially without essential change. How does that apply in football now? Let me tell you something. Uh, you I love Webster's dictionary. <laughs> right. But you know what? When it comes to the uh, definition of continuity, I'm going to throw that Webster's dictionary away because <laughs> Virginia Tech is the definition of continuity, and particularly at the key positions. Frank Beamer, Bud Foster, their strength coach, Mike Gentry, I believe it's their 24th season. Brian Steinspring, it's his 14th season as the offensive coordinator. Mark, what that translates to is no panic. No panic. And right, these last two plays were a perfect illustration of that. You know, Virginia Tech down 14-3. All the momentum to Georgia Tech. They get the interception. They get the big offensive play. They're right back in it. But it also translates to what happened last season when they had all those young players. It translates to this season, Mark, when they lose their first game. There's a calmness. There's a confidence with continuity yeah. because nobody panics. Everybody knows the expectations. They certainly are the definition of continuity. There's Steinspring up top, the offensive coordinator for the Hokies, who in two plays really turned the complexion of this game around. The interception and then the long run by Ryan Williams. Oh. And you talk about not being able to get out of your own way. Kick returner Embry Peoples blew a tire too. He lost his shoe back at the 10 yard line. Looked like he was almost pushed down by his teammate Orwin Smith. Number seven. Now we'll see how Josh Nesbitt rebounds from that interception he threw on the last possession. Allen on the toss again. And Allen brought down at the 21 yard line. Got a good block on the edge from Roddy Jones, and he picks up seven. What great effort by Jason Worlds. 260 pounds, Mark. Another in those lines. It's a Virginia Tech defensive end. Watch him right here from inside out. That's a great effort. And again, Chancellor up in there, the free safety. Worlds told us he got a call from Corey Moore, who told him that, hey, it's your job to be the best ever to come out at that position at Virginia Tech. That's a little bit of pressure. On second and three, Dwyer gets the first down. Out to the 26 yard line. He picks up five. Both teams getting a little bit more of their offensive rhythm here early in the second half. It's a great setting for a college football game, isn't it? You right here in the heart of Atlanta. A lot of people weren't sure how this triple option would adapt. The people in Atlanta, a pro sports town, if they would really embrace this triple option. Mark, they embrace winning is what they embrace. They sure do. Here's Dwyer, who's a winner as the conference player of the year last year. Grim making the stop after a gain of about six. And 
you know, sometimes it's a little unique for student athletes going to school in a metropolitan area. And we had a chance to speak with defensive end Derek Morgan at Georgia Tech. And he said that, strangely enough, hey, we're kind of insulated from all that's going on in this jewel of the South Atlanta, you know, with the movie stars and, you know, the, the artists that come to the game sometimes, Ludacris and some of those cats. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. You got the best of both worlds. Mark of two on the play by Dwyer. You get back to that point of, you know, schools in big cities. Let me tell you something. When I was at Texas A&M for nine years in College Station, Texas, which is the exact opposite. When I was at Notre Dame for eight years in South Bend, which is the exact opposite. That's what you told the kids all the time, like Derek Morgan. You said, it doesn't matter if you go to Atlanta or L.A., you're going to do the same things in College Station day to day that you're going to do in Atlanta and L.A. You're going to study. You're going to go to class. You're going to sit in your apartment at night. You don't have the kind of money to go out and spend in Atlanta anyhow. Yeah. So you might as well come to College Station, Texas, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you got me signed already. Oh, I was rolling right there, baby. <laughs> you went back into back into mode right hey, there. <laughs> it, it, Mark, it clicked in. Uh -huh. The moment you brought up Derek Morgan's <laughs> comment, it just confirmed all those things I sold when I was in those. In the city of Atlanta, and uh, yeah, Morgan told us that Hey, we just go about our business on the field, and they're taking care of it on the field today. This is Lyons with his first carry of the ball game. Preston Lyons spelling Jonathan Dwyer. He picks up three on the play. One thing you really like about this offense, Mark, I do as a coach, you know, things all of a sudden there with Virginia Tech getting the interception, the huge play to Ryan Williams, Williams it was a little chaotic. But this kind of offense with these slow ball control kind of drives, it settles everything down, I think, for Georgia Tech. Second down and six coming up. Dwyer back in the ball game. Breaks one. Jonathan Dwyer still on his feet. Down to the 25-yard line. A missed tackle by Cody Grimm allowed the 34 yard gain in the first down. Mark Georgia Tech is well, look at the big split right here first of all. Now they're going to take the tackle down. Watch the defensive end close but he takes the quarterback. Georgia Tech is running the fullback a little bit wider right there. Then they crack the free safety chancellor. They're taking the fullback. They're running him a little bit wider. Virginia Tech going to have to bring that defensive end down on the fullback. On the toss. This is right. He's brought down after a gain of about two on the play. Good tackle by Grimm and Cam Chancellor. Boy, that safety's real busy in this kind of defensive scheme. That was an excellent play by Cody Grimm, though, Mark. Cody Grimm's up there at strong safety. Watch him, number 26. They're going to arc block on him. This is really difficult. We said that before. To have a blocker on you, still able to shed that blocker and make the play on the football and force it back inside to Cam Chancellor. That was an excellent play by Cody Grimm right there. That's up a second down and eight. Has been handed off to the first man through. That's Preston Lyons, who was met immediately. Might have gotten a yard on the play, maybe two. That's Foster's defense under duress right now. Knows the ball resting. Just outside the 22 yard line with 3.11 to go in the third quarter. Third and six to go for Georgia Tech. And it's four down territory for Georgia Tech. So this third and six mark, I think it's a running down. They run the football twice here. Dwyer in the backfield. Nesbitt keeps it. Had a nice gaping hole and all the way down to the 13. First down, Yellow Jackets. An eight yard gain. Mark, I talked about how important the free safety Cam Chancellor was. Paul Johnson now figured out. Watch the slot back right here, number 20, Roddy Jones, arc and block the free safety. It's all about adjusting those blocking schemes to how you're playing run support. We saw this happen a little bit last week when Georgia Tech uh, adjusted. Went on to win against Florida State. This is the 11th play of the drive coming up. First man through is Dwyer, stopped immediately by Cardero Thompson. A one yard gain on the play. Second down and nine coming up. Tyrod Taylor just uh, cooling his heels on the sideline, looking to get back in the game. But boy, this 
offense really chewing up a lot of time on the clock by Georgia Tech. Bud Foster this week they moved Anton Exum a freshman free safety they moved him from free safety to quarterback to try to give the defense a look but man it's hard to get a look like you're getting with Josh Nesbitt running right now. Nesbitt keeps it himself. Great toss to right. Touchdown. Mark, it's time for Bud Foster to change his plan because they are getting a blocker on Cam Chancellor. Watch number 18, Anthony Allen. They bypass the strong safety. That is very tough in the open field, Mark, with a blocker on you, that much grass. It's time for Bud Foster to change it up. Paul Johnson has figured it out. High snap. Well, right now, Paul Johnson is playing chess. Everyone else is playing checkers, right with the right stuff. Tech with the lead. College football on ESPN primetime, a battle in the Coastal Division in the ACC. And Georgia Tech, with a win tonight, would be right in the thick of the division race with Virginia Tech and the University of Miami. You think Georgia Tech will squib this kick? Mark, I doubt that they're going to kick it deep to Tyrell, Tyrell Roberts again. I guess they did. Had a big return last time. Down to the 30-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. And looks poised and ready for another nice kickoff return. This time, down to the 43-yard line. Mark, why would you kick that football again to Tyrell <laughs> Roberts, though? <laughs> Maybe they'll talk that over during this break. We'll be right back. The city of Atlanta, a glow at night. College football, primetime on ESPN. Georgia Tech leading by 11. The Hokies, though, with good starting field position on this drive, with 1.28 to go in the third period. Ryan Williams went 66 yards the last time Virginia Tech had the ball. All the way for the score. We'll see what they do here. Tyrod Taylor just playing with the defense and chased out of bounds finally at the 46. Nightmare decision and season for Sam Bradford. Little counter to Ryan Williams, but nowhere to go. Stopped up at about the 44 yard line by Cedric Griffin, one of the most underrated players in the entire conference. And it's a three yard loss on the play. 35 seconds to go in the third. This is a huge third down, obviously, but also because this Georgia Tech offense has heated up. They have 157 yards offense in the third quarter. Virginia Tech has to keep the football away from them, Mark. Third and nine. Pass protection has been an issue for Virginia Tech. And they heat up Taylor. Derek Morgan with the sack. And a great way to end the period for Georgia Tech. The defense is back in the ATL. You know, this is the first right footed punter for Virginia Tech since 1995. They have all left the punters. A string of walk on punters too that have gotten the job done. The fair catch called by Terrence. A 29 yard effort. Nothing on the return. Virginia Tech undefeated in conference play coming in. Collapse in Blacksburg. They got blown out. This is Roddy Jones. And Jones stopped.
by Cam Chancellor. Bob, you know, last year in the ACC, there are critics that say that Georgia Tech just caught people off guard and by surprise with this wishbone. In the second year, they seem to be having a lot of success yeah. still. Mark, I don't buy that argument at all. I mean, and I think that's a sound argument for someone that hasn't defended it, that could say that, that you become more familiar with it. But also, Paul Johnson now sees how you're going to defend him so he can make adjustments. This is a sound, sound offense, Mark, that has an answer for just about everything. Second and five, they give it to Dwyer up the middle, falling forward to the 45-yard line. He picked up three. It'll be third down and about two to go. And what about players like Jonathan Dwyer? I mean, how tough is it to get running backs to play in this system? Well, I think that's going to be, as we move forward, the question that Paul Johnson will have to answer is Josh Nesbeth, Dwyer, uh, uh, Demarius Thomas, their wide receiver, their big three on offense were already here. Highly recruited guys to play in a pro offense. But I'll tell you what, he will find the right players to run this offense. This offense will be extremely successful here. Third down and two coming up. Nesbitt keeps it himself. Boy, that's going to be close. First down marker resting just beyond the 47. <laughs> and this will be very interesting if they are short, Mark, because true to form, Paul Johnson always goes for it on fourth down. In this situation right now at 21 to 10 with the ball where it is, it'll be very interesting to see because it looks like it's short. By inches. Oh, they gave him the first down. Wow. <laughs> that extra roll. <laughs> Guess you got to get right the angle on it, right? First down for the Yellow Jackets. It's all in the rotation, Bob. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to look at that again when we came back. Come back now. And a flag. Wow. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Frank's been around a long time. I mean, that cock of the head right there is. I haven't seen that before. Looked like he just lost in three card Monty or something. No, when we talk about all the technology these two tech teams playing, all that's riding on these games, doesn't it seem like there should be a, a more efficient, scientific, scientific way than yeah. just bringing out that Good 10 point. yard chain? Yeah, I mean, there is some margin for error in that thing. Man. Something stay old school, man. First and 15. On the reverse, this is the speedster, Stephen Hill, the freshman. And he's pushed out of bounds about a yard short of the first down by Stephen Virgil. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. It was Alabama that defeated Virginia Tech here in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome, uh, just down the road a little bit. First game of the season for both teams. After the 14-yard gain, Nesbitt on the pitch, and he put it on the ground. Still loose, and Georgia Tech recovering it. Marcus Wright saw it bounce free. It's going to be a loss of one. And if there's one area where Georgia Tech really struggles, Mark, I think it is Josh Nesbitt when he pitches that football on the third element of that option. They, you know, we've had him the last two weeks. That's probably your best chance with a turnover against them is to make them pitch that football. So it's up a third down and two. Nesbitt told us when we met with him that when they first started running this offense, they fumbled it a lot. They looked terrible. But he gets the first down here. They've improved a lot, Bob Davey, since the first few drills with this triple option. And, you know, it really is remarkable. I mean, Josh Nesbitt with his, was a guy who threw the ball every down in high school. He was doing a shotgun offense. He really wanted to go to Georgia. They recruited him as a linebacker or a safety. But he comes here to Georgia Tech, 
it's only been, what, about a year and a half they've been in this offense? It really is remarkable. You have to give this young man a lot of credit right here. First down and 10, approaching 11 minutes to go. Jones in motion. Nesbitt keeps it himself. Still on his feet. A great effort by Nesbitt. And another Georgia Tech first down. Nikos Brown finally made the tackle, but a 12 yard pickup on the play. Mark, we met with him yesterday, and you said the same thing. Kim Belton, our director, Jeff Evers, said the same thing when we left that meeting. When he left, he's a lot thicker, <laughs> a lot bigger in the upper body than he looks in his pads. Yeah. I mean, you see him in street clothes now. He is packed together. It looks like a linebacker. On the toss, Peebles. And Peebles brought down shy of the 25 yard line. I mean, they take your will away. I mean, it's a schematic advantage. You can truly out scheme people in this offense. Now, there's trade offs, Mark. There's negatives to everything. Obviously, there's negatives. But just from an X and O standpoint, this is the most difficult to defend. Nesbitt gives it to the first guy through. That's Jonathan Dwyer, who picks up about two yards. Let's go back to that third down conversion when the ball was turned a little bit mm. and Georgia Tech got the first down you see how big it is because how much time gets taken off the clock if you just keep a possession going in this offense I mean this is the total ball control offense yeah right here let's look at it again a little spin <laughs> wow what's well, an inch or two between friends third and four coming up. Peebles getting to the edge and brought down shy of the 20 yard line. It'll be fourth down and short for Georgia Tech. It's a Cam Chancellor tonight, Mark. I mean, he has the toughest job on this football field, as we said from the first snap of the game. He is playing with great effort now. That's why he has the lunch pail that Bud Foster gives to the most tenacious player on his Virginia Tech defense. Fourth down, Georgia Tech one for one on. Fourth downs tonight and seven for nine on the season. A yeah, little bit of motion on that left side of the line. Look, I think that's going to be offside on Virginia Tech. I think the defensive end. Yeah, Nikos Brown was out there. Offside. Defense. Number 47. In the neutral zone. Five yards. Kelly was also a first down. Well, that name Brown, a famous name in music circles, his dad Chuck Brown, uh, the godfather of go go music, which is big <laughs> in the Virginia and D.C. area, came out with a hit song back in the day, uh, Bustin' Loose. He busted loose a little too early on that play. Thought you might be coming with a little James Brown right there. <laughs> huh? well, some of the coaches actually have his dad's CD. Defense trying to change the tune right now on Georgia Tech's offense. Dwyer with nowhere to go right there, but the clock running under eight minutes to play now in the fourth quarter. First half of this football game, Georgia Tech one play the whole first half. The long pass to Demarius Thomas. Second half, you've seen the true triple option at work. Second half, Virginia Tech only with one play. Ryan Williams, the long touchdown run after the interception. It's been two opposite kind of halves as far as offense. Yeah, look at the production in the second half. Rushing yards by Georgia Tech. Nesbitt keeps it in an Allen and toss. It's loose again. It's on the ground. Virginia Tech has the ball. Devon Morgan comes up with the loose ball and with 7.19 to go, Virginia Tech still alive. Those problems continue, Mark. Pitching the football. That time they come out and pitch it. Rashad Carmichael knocks it out. Davon Morgan now recovers. Let's watch it. Virginia Tech makes them execute the whole triple option. Excellent play by the corner. Number 21, Rashad Carmichael. First down and 10. 7.19 to go. Nesbitt with the turnover. Tyrod Taylor had his defining moment earlier this season against Nebraska leading his team in a comeback victory 
in the dying seconds can he do it again here. Great touch pass complete to Danny Cole for the first down at the 41 yard line a pickup of 18. Virginia Tech with all three of its timeouts remaining. Right now we're going to test Tyrod Taylor Mark we've talked about maybe one of the most improved quarterbacks in the country much more polished in the pocket. Well obviously down 21 10 it's going to be all about the passing game and don't forget their problems with pass protection. It all starts there for Virginia Tech. Taylor on the rollout. Going to take it himself. That's why they call him T-Mobile. Out of bounds at the 45 yard line and now let's see who's winging it. Brought to you by Pizza Hut Wing Street. Tyrod Taylor is winging it. Six of ten. Kind of winging it. Well, he came into this game with 80 passes in a row without an interception. There's plenty of time left, though. Second and five. Ryan Williams with a gaping hole up the middle. Another first down for the Hokies inside the 35, where Morgan Burnett makes the tackle. Well, he is explosive. And they talk about this young guy plays with passion. I mean, he's not only fast and quick, I mean, he's got a great attitude as well. Frank Beamer called him maybe the most complete back I've ever seen, which is a glowing comment. Think about the guys that he's coached. Ogles being the ball game now. Got a great block. Taylor still alive and brought down. At the 25 yard line David Wilson cleared a few extra yards for him at the 30 and he picked up eight. You see what Virginia Tech is doing Mark they're rolling Tyrod Taylor out because of the pressure. They still get excellent pressure Georgia Tech. But this guy is as dynamic as Ryan Williams <laughs> carrying the football. But Virginia Tech's offensive line really struggles in pass protection. Second and two. Give is to David Wilson. And Wilson got the first down, a gain of three. Virginia Tech came into the game ranked number four. But a win here tonight keeps them in the national championship picture. Taylor trying to keep them there too. T Mobile. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. <laughs> As he was running for a touchdown mark the thought dawned on me can you see him in Georgia Tech's offense <laughs> running that triple option. I mean this guy as much as you talk about becoming more polished as a pocket passer he is electrifying carrying that football Virginia Tech will go for two right here to make it a three point game to try to make it a three point game. This guy is unbelievable Tyrod Taylor in the open field. His first rushing touchdown of the season shows you how much he's concentrated on staying in the pocket. But you know what? Maybe it's not such a bad thing, like you said, that no he moves around a little bit. Still plenty of time to go. Two point conversion on the way. Up in the air and incomplete. So the difference stays at five, which means Virginia Tech would need a touchdown and nothing less. But he's pulled him out of the bag before. Can Taylor do it again? He's got 452 to do it when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. And a few moments ago, Tyrod Taylor, Bob Davies, shaken up on this two-point conversion attempt. Georgia Tech coming with a blitz. He's going to take a straight-on hit right here. A lot of weight down on that right hand or right arm, it looked to me. See him right there on the bench. Interesting, you see Ryan Williams, the freshman tailback, who's been fighting some flu symptoms coming over. He'll be back, Mark. He'll be back. It all comes down right now to stopping Josh Nesbitt in his Georgia Tech offense. Give Tyrod Taylor one more chance. Josh Nesbitt with a fumble the last time he was on the field for Georgia Tech. Kickoff down at the five yard line. That's Embry Peebles. And 
Peoples returns it out to the 25 where it'll be first down and 10. Well, showed it too. Has been on the play fake. Going up top and incomplete. Cam Chancellor right there with Embry Peoples. Mark Cam Chancellor is playing an outstanding football game. They know that he's coming up tough and run support, so they run the little play action wheel route. Very interesting call right there by Paul Johnson because now Bud Foster has the advantage here on second and 10, Mark. This is a huge play in this football game right now. You hold them under five yards right here, set up third and five. Virginia Tech will get the football back. And they're thinking about it big time. Nesbitt on the toss. Allen on the catch. And Anthony Allen with a first down out at midfield at the 48 yard line. Allen went low to catch the ball on the pitch and he picked up 23. Two courageous calls by Paul Johnson. The pass on first down. They come back and pitch the football mark. Look at their two previous pitches. Both of them not even close. They come back and put pitch the football right there on second down. That was a major play on second and 10. Again, they're going to get Chancellor the free safety blocked. That was a big, big play. Nesbitt hands it off to Dwyer, who stopped up right near the line of scrimmage by Demetrius Taylor. Might have gotten one on the play. You've got an option quarterback, Bob. You, you've got to have him practicing that pitch a lot. I mean, uh, that's, it sounds uh, simple, right? I mean, Mark, you hit the nail on the head, and not everybody can do it. You know, you come down that line of scrimmage, you pitch it with your left hand going left, your right hand going right. Obviously, if you've pitched it, somebody has taken you and taken you out. It's a very difficult thing. And I give credit to Paul Johnson for coming back and pitching that football. I guess I give him credit. If it would have fumbled right there, I'd have been first guessing that call. Second and nine. Nesbitt keeps it on the quarterback lead. A nice gain down to the 42 yard line right at that first down marker. He picked up nine, and it looks like enough for the first down for the Yellow Jackets with 3.19 to go. Well, Cam Chancellor will be glad when this football game's over, Mark. I mean, they have put a blocker on him every time. And what happens? But to keep it simple, Virginia Tech is caught between the defensive end, closing for the fullbacker, taking the quarterback, and they're one short. I believe they call it assignment football. Georgia Tech would move into a tie of sorts with Virginia Tech. Both teams with one loss in the Coastal Division of the ACC with a win tonight. First and ten. Jonathan Dwyer on the carry. Boy, Dwyer takes a pounding, doesn't he? Going into all that humanity. <laughs> well, Virginia Tech using their timeouts, but Georgia Tech with 233 yards now, Mark, in the second half. First half, they had 88 yards and 51 on the one pass to Demario Thomas. But they come back in the second half now, and they have just controlled this football game. They have made the X and O adjustments on blocking the perimeter. And it's been a it's been a clinic here in the second half of just triple option football. And what about the Georgia Tech defense? Boy, that's you know. the story of the night as far as I'm concerned. You look at the way that they gave up 539 yards last week down in Tallahassee against Florida State. And this week giving up just 16 points to a Virginia Tech team that Bob came into this game off a 48 point night against Boston He's College. Yeah, this, Second and nine coming up. This was a tough week around here for Georgia Tech defensive players and coaches, and they have responded. Nesbitt hands it off once again to Jonathan Dwyer. Georgia Tech has run 66 plays tonight. 59 of them have been running plays. Paul Johnson's done it before. He's been successful at places before Georgia Tech, and it's been successful tonight. Three oh eight to go a pivotal critical third and seven coming up all just inside the 40 only fourth down territory for Georgia Tech 
Nesbitt keeps it, and he's got the first down. He's thinking about six. Nesbitt, no way to stop him. Touchdown. They're going to review this. But it's been a clinic on triple option football. They're going to see if he stepped out of bounds. Josh Nesbitt had a similar play last week at Florida State, Bob, when he seemingly broke the back of the Seminoles late in the game with a run just like this. Jack is. He's still in bounds at this point. The referee is right there. Oh, right there. The only thing. Looks like he almost left a divot on the chop. <laughs> Boy, he is a strong, strong player. The only thing One you can see, the side it. judge right there, Mark, was not looking down at his feet. Watch the side judge here late. Right there, see, he looks, you know, that left foot was very close right there. Yeah. Well, Josh Nesbitt's going to have some happy roommates tonight. He rooms with Morgan Burnett and Derek Morgan. And he talked about Atoning for last year. Running on the field stands. Touchdown. Nesbitt with his third touchdown of the night. He's run 23 times for 122 yards. Mark Josh Nesbitt, the last four weeks averaging 27 carries about 100 yards a game from the quarterback position in that, this triple option. That's all about durability right. I mean <laughs> you have to have a guy that's not going to break down. Mark let's take a look at what's happened. This has been a clinic on option football. The first thing you're going to see the defensive end right here is going to close and take the fullback. So now the quarterback comes out on the option. You get an excellent crackback block right here by Tyler Melton on the free safety. Grimm is going to take the pitch. There's nobody on that quarterback. So if you're going to play your run support that way, you have to put the defensive end on the quarterback, not the fullback. Because if the quarterback gets out, you've got both perimeter players used up. It has been a clinic by Paul Johnson against a great defensive football team for Virginia Tech. Is that designation by the lineman to take the fullback <laughs> or quarterback it, made before the snap? Exactly, or? Mark. It comes down to calls. You know, you tell your defensive end either take the fullback or take the quarterback in conjunction with how you're playing it on the perimeter. So they are not totally in sync on defense, but the Georgia Tech is totally in sync on offense. That's 311 rushing yards. The fifth time this season, Georgia Tech has gone over 300, including 400 last week in Tallahassee. Well, this time, Bob, they don't kick it to Roberts. It's fielded at the 32 instead. Let's check in with Wendy in the studio. A 
All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. And back here at the 39, it's first and 10. And a daunting task ahead for Tyrod Taylor at this point. Yeah, Mark, we started off who's the best one loss team in the country? Virginia Tech had a legitimate right to say that. All of a sudden, that's coming to an end right now. Taylor downfield, and it's complete at the 33 yard line. Danny Cole seemingly always on the end of those desperation passes by Taylor. And if the number four team loses before this night is over, what happens next with respect to the top 10? Yeah, there's a bunch of teams in that mix. But you know what? With this guy at quarterback, I'm not ready to go totally down that conversation just yet of ruling Virginia Tech out. BCS standings coming out after the games this weekend. Tyrod Taylor underneath complete. That's Boone. Big Be Greg Boone makes the catch. Well, that's a big athletic tight end, Greg Boone, a guy that was a quarterback in high school. And look where the football is down here at the 20 yard line with two minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Well, Taylor's only thrown 12 times, but he's completed eight. Just dancing around back there. Pump faked one defender and runs out of bounds at the 16 yard line with 2 12 to go. Mark that clock will start again because there's more than two minutes left on that clock. So Virginia Tech needs to get up there and get going because the referee's starting the clock right now. It's Derek Morgan the leader up front for Georgia Tech apparently holding his back and shaking up. Georgia Tech calls one of its three timeouts second and eight coming up. Well Josh Nesbitt has been the central figure in Georgia Tech's wins both well three weeks in a row now but especially last week game winning drive against Florida State this is what it looked like. Yeah Mark he took the this is the game winning touchdown run I think if I remember back very similar to what he did tonight. And he and Joe Webb from UAB from Alabama Birmingham Joe Webb is the number one quarterback as far as rushing. I think Josh Nesbitt may overtake him tonight statistically. I tell you what Joe Webb sitting at home right now glad that you mentioned his name. You know what I think Joe Webb <laughs> might be playing tonight. I saw they were getting beat by somebody here a minute ago. <laughs> we found a way to weave Joe Webb into that Joe conversation Webb. didn't we. 206 to go is second and eight. Virginia Tech with no timeouts remaining. Taylor complete to Boykin. Out of bounds inside the 10 yard line it'll be first and goal from about the eight. Mark again because there's two minutes and one second instead of a minute 59 that clock's going to roll again when they set this ball ready for play but again a very excellent touch on that throw by Tyrod Taylor. First and goal. Out of the backfield Williams wide open he's going to jog in for the score and the question begs now Bob do they go for two here or one. It's sitting on a six point lead. One point you know, makes Mark, it a five Two point points advantage. doesn't make much difference though. It's still going to be a touchdown. They need two touchdowns to win the football right. game. So whether it's a five point game or a four point game is really of no relevance. The relevant thing now is onside kick for Virginia Tech. And special teams has been one of the strong points during the Beamer tenure all 23 years at Virginia Tech Mark last week Florida State onside kicked at the end of the game Georgia Tech's backup quarterback Jabo Shaw recovered that correct right. well we're in the same scenario again tonight Virginia Tech definitely onside kick 148 to go boy Tyrod Taylor led that team down the field with clinical efficiency they scored in a hurry and it all started with the little pooch kind of kick but a minute and 12 seconds to take that football the length of the field and if you're Virginia Tech right now you have to feel confident if you get this football back you can take it and score again yeah. there's Frank Beamer the special teams guru laying it down for his team with 148 to go well what a great day in college <laughs> football huh? 
couple Texas, of Texas, Oklahoma, a yeah. big time game. You have Ohio State going down. The Florida Arkansas game, last second field goal right for the Gators yeah, to win. Barely and Notre Dame, USC. Going to be interesting to see what those BCS standings look like. And who ends up ultimately in the BCS National Championship by Citibank in Pasadena. And number 11, Jabo Shaw, again out there in a key position, lined up. I'm going to circle him right there. That's the guy last week that recovered it down in Tallahassee. <laughs> it looks like Virginia Tech's going the opposite way. They have two kickers in the game, Mark. Here it comes. They get the high bounce, and it's fielded cleanly by the DB, Gerard Tarrant. Not well, sure how much better they could have executed. They got it high up in the air. Didn't have enough time to get hokey players downfield. Mark the number four team in the country. There's going to be an interesting BCS poll tomorrow. The first day, right? The first yep. BCS poll. What happens? Does Boise State move up after an unimpressive win at Tulsa? The Cincinnati move up. Yeah, the Bearcats doing well, and you wonder what's ahead for them with Tony Pike, their starting quarterback, hurt in that game. They are going to turn it loose and get down into A Town tonight. Georgia Tech will improve to six and one. And four and one in the ACC's Coastal Division. Virginia Tech, meanwhile, will fall to five and two overall and three and one in conference play. Final score 28 to 23 for the Yellow Jackets. Their first one at home against a top five team in a couple of decades. College football scoreboard is coming up next. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. What a day in college football. For Bob Davey and our entire talented ESPN production crew, guys behind the camera, you never get a chance to see. I'm Mark Jones. Right now, let's go back to Wendy Nix in the studio.